Expat lifestyles, the tourists. Uh, how do you define this? If you look at most of the negativity that you find related to the expat channels, um, I'll tell you predominantly the Philippines, I don't get this sort of rubbish in Spain. Um, Spain is normally people arguing about prices of things. Um, but you find there's a lot of infighting that goes on within the Philippines expat communities. Um, but you also find that once people actually know each other, depending where you are, it reduces. Uh, for example, I believe CDO doesn't have much trouble, but I found in Cebu there's always lots of people arguing about stuff that's simply irrelevant. Um, the reality is a lot of these people are not actually expats, they're tourists. They're two-week millionaires. They have limited budgets and limited time. But they have strong opinions and often don't like people pointing out that their opinions are wrong. Uh, this is why you've got to be careful when you're gathering information that you're actually taking information from people that actually A, do stuff, but B, actually gather um, relevant and correct information. You know, if somebody's sitting on the beach in Boracay every time they go to the Philippines and they only go in when they've saved up holiday money, they're a tourist. They are not, they're not an expat, they're a tourist. The same as people that just travel around backpacking. They're a backpacker. They're not a resident expat. They're not an expat. They're not living the life of that country. They're simply touring that country. If you're needing to live off a fixed income that's coming out from other countries but not actually integrating, it's sort of an expat, but often... It can be a very strange lifestyle. Some of are really aggressive with me when I explain to them that they've created their own little prison um, because they live in a subdivision. They don't integrate with people outside it. The only places they're going is from the subdivision to the shopping malls and then back. And that's it. That's that's not living. That's, uh, for me, that was like a, living inside a prison. Um, also, I'm one of those people that actually believe you're locking yourself in with people you should be avoiding. <laughs> with, because a lot of the Filipinos with a lot of money have accumulated it by certain means, which is why you could be putting yourself at more of a position of harm because these people got rich sometimes from means you do not know. Um, but this is why you sometimes see these people mouthing off, but they have nothing to them. Um, they're not living the expat life. They haven't developed a business overseas. They haven't spent years overseas. They're not looking to develop a life in the Philippines, for example. But they like to have an opinion as if they're doing the same, but they're not. This is why some of what they see as their ideals conflict because they have ideals that aren't actually reality because it's what they think. It's not what people have seen, experienced, done, know people that have done the same thing, blah, blah, blah. It's simply things these people think happen. Um, but they state it as fact. And this is why you get a lot more conflicts than you really should. I mean, I could name some people, but what's the point? I'm sure you already know the difference between somebody that's lived a life or living the life than somebody who goes there on holiday. Um, in the same way, people are actually doing stuff in the Philippines. There's people that run farms and there's people that own restaurants. There's people that have manufacturing. I, I know people that manufacture custom chrome wheels, for example, for motorbikes. I know people that export uh, nipper styled housing for the uh, garden market. I know people that export jewellery, shell jewellery and stuff like that. I know people that export shrimps and prawns. They are expats. In the same way, if you're working for a company overseas, you're an expat. You're having to adapt to that society. Even if you're only going to the office and to the condo, in a business point of view, you've had to adapt to the culture, even if you don't even see it on a daily basis. I mean, it's like when I was in the Middle East, you find that 
you're dealing with people there from India, Pakistan, Malaysia, uh, Philippines, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Oman, and they're all very different. You've got to treat them all very differently. They also have different ethics. You know, the, the some of the, the locals, when you want something done, can take two or three days, yet you'll find the guys from Pakistan and India will have it done in 20 minutes. They'll make it out that priority. They'll get it done. Same way you find the certain people in certain jobs. That's the reality of it. That's living an expat life. But if you're there as a tourist, you go to the hotel, you eat at the hotel, you eat in a restaurant, you go to a resort, you go and see the tourist sites. It's not even the backpacking level. It's not seeking out culture. It's a bit like Thailand now. Thailand's become a bit of a backpacker's um, paradise, but it's sort of losing its appeal because of the sheer volume of people that are doing the same thing. And that's, that's what makes it different between an expat and a tourist. An expat actually lives in the community. An expat may live in a uh, gated community, but you normally find that they have more normal activities. They're not all tourist orientated. They go to green bowls, they go bowling, they go fishing, they do the stuff you would do wherever you are on the planet. You know, they do have hobbies and interests. They're not just focusing on, I'm here for two weeks, four months, whatever, but actually trying to expand their horizons. Um, because even when I go to Germany, I mean, I lived in Germany for six years, but even when I go there, like when I go to the Mosul Valley, when I got time and a uh, transportation because I'm struggling with the vehicle now. I'm going to have to drive over to Germany until I get all the work done on it. But the, the point being is I'm a tourist when I go there because I'm not living there. I'm not renting a house in Germany. I'm not living in Germany for the next two years. I'm not experiencing the local way of life. I'm a tourist. I'm going there because I like to experience the vineyards and the wine of that area. Um, in Spain, we live in a tourist area, but I'm expat. I'm sitting here after working on the van this morning, I'm taking the alternator off. It's an expat life. Uh, yeah. I know somebody's going to say, well, I thought you were getting somebody else to fix it. I am, but I want to get the alternator and the fuel pump set up with the, the new belt to drive it to the mechanic. Um, I'm going to do that myself because it'll only take me about half an hour. Uh, just, just gonna try and get some spanners to get because the ones I've got ain't doing it. I need to get another, some better quality ones, some ring spanners. Anyway, but the the point being is that's the difference. And it's, so, if you're actually gathering information, you need to be aware that a lot of these people that are very short, stupid comments. Often um, they'll put BS and all this sort of stuff because there's no construction. There's nothing there. They have no experience or knowledge because they can't actually justify why they're being negative. Um, an example of that was somebody commented this week. He started a like podcast video type channel. Um, he puts two stupid comments, and they were stupid because they weren't of any context or value or or explanation. It's just simple offensive language use. Um, yet he was talking as if I don't know what I'm talking about. But also means everybody that had already commented didn't know what they were talking about. When we're talking about relationships and how online work, dating can actually work. They're like, oh, another expat doesn't know what he's talking about. Because I assume he's American, um, from what I've heard. Um, but the reality is, if you looked at the comments, several people already commented, it, it worked for them. Um, what, how much evidence do you need? Do you need their birth certificates and their marriage certificates and checking their dates to see how long they've been married? This is the problem. I would say that guy is not an expat. He's very opinionated because his opinions is simply it. You know, I don't care what anybody else says. That is it. Thanks for watching.